listen to me uh, talk for about roughly 20 minutes. Hopefully, hopefully I'll contain myself and not go over that. Um, I'm here to talk about color, which is uh, something that is really important to my work. Um, and I actually didn't realize that until kind of recently, um, which is kind of funny. I was actually in Detroit uh, just recently for, um, I got back yesterday, I was there for roughly a month working on a big public art project. And uh, the guy who was helping me out, we're working on a six story building and we're up really high. Uh, I don't like heights, so that didn't help, but uh, he was fine. And I never met this guy before. Um, ended up being a really great assistant, worked out really well. But he kept, he kept saying all these things to me like, you know, what if we mix this color and this color, what do we get? And I'm like, he'd be like, well, I want to take red and can we make, I want to make, uh, he's like, what happens when we mix pink and red? And I'm like, I think you get more pink. I'm pretty sure he, you don't get like another color. Like, I don't know. I kept on doing this like over and over and I'm just like, dude, you're, you gotta like, you know, and he's like wanting to make primary colors. I'm like you, you don't make a primary color. It already exists. Um, it's just really, really funny. But uh, this Italian guy, he was really cool. But anyways, um, I'll show you the project at the end of these slides. Uh, this is a, a, a church that I painted in Washington, D.C. Uh, in 2012. And uh, basically, this was another funny story just because being that it is a, that it was at one point in time a church, now it's you know it's not a church anymore in my eyes. Um, it's sort of a sculptural object, but uh, I've got a lot of people asking, you know, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you doing this? Uh, what does this mean? What is it? You know, a good one is always, what is it going to be? You know, it's going to be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be something in my in my eyes. I mean, it's purely abstract, non-representational work uh, with a lot of emphasis placed on color. Um, and you know, I'd get both positive and negative reactions uh, while I was working. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I would explain it as it's not, you know, not trying to desecrate it, not trying to destroy it. You know, I have uh, a lot of respect for the architect that designed this and and the history of the structure. Um, you know, so it wasn't coming from a, a you know a negative place. But people still seem to, to be very sort of adamant about, I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're, you're just throwing color all over this. This is horrible. And like this was in the early stages. Um, and I think this was, this was actually more accepted, I think, by, by people because they're like, oh, I get it. It's now, it's like coming together. But like with, with like this phase, it was like, oh, what are you, what are you doing? It's, this is awful. So I, you know, and, and it's, it's funny working on these projects. Um, there's another, um, I've, I've kind of like started to realize that you can't please everybody. And, you know, the nature of working in public space is that you're going to get, you know, both positive and negative reactions. Um, so I, I'm, I'm starting to, I guess, get thick skin when it comes to working on these things because I'm just, I already know it's gonna be, you know, What's it going to be, or or why are you doing? Why why are you using these bright colors? It doesn't make sense to me. I, I, um, and I guess if you don't understand creativity and you're not a creative person, you're not gonna you're not gonna understand why somebody would want to paint an entire building. Um, this was in Lima, Peru. Uh, probably th this is the largest work that I've done to date. It was done last year. We had a team of about ten assistants uh, that were local to the area. Um, and it's roughly, I want to say, 150 feet uh, tall, which 
was not a pleasant experience for me because I don't like heights. And we were on swing stages, which if you know what a swing stage, if you see people who are you know, washing windows, they're typically using swing stages. I think there's a photo. Uh, yeah, there we are. And that, that, was, that was not, um, I, got, I got used to it, but uh, definitely was, I was still, I think, throughout the process kind of uh, a little rattled. Um, and it's, it's funny to me it, that, that, you know, I guess that I don't like heights and I still do this stuff because it's, <laughs> every time I go up, I'm like, why am I doing this? Um, just another shot of this piece. This is actually here in Atlanta. This was um, done for the city of Atlanta and uh, it was commissioned work. Um, again, you know, uh, obviously when you're looking through these slides, you know, I use a lot of bright colors. Um, I, I tend to, I guess, just gravitate towards colors um, that, you know, I don't, I don't put a lot of thought into, um, you know, while I'm working necessarily, but prior to working on a project, I'll select colors and, and know ahead of time, okay, I'm gonna use, I'm definitely gonna use some red, I'm definitely gonna use some pink, I'm definitely gonna use various shades of certain colors. Um, just a shot of us working on this one. Um, so, and also with, most of these slides are, are public works. I also work in my have a studio practice as well and tend to use, I guess, a lot of bright colors um, with, with my paintings. And for a long time I was working with a lot of black and white, which, which, which I also really like. I, like. I think black and white are really great. Um, and I think working outdoors and being, just expressing myself with all the, the loud, uh, vibrant colors sort of woke me up a little and got me to, to like not use black and white with my studio stuff. Um, so, and, and, you know, ultimately I think it's, it, I feel like I'm, I have freedom and I think that's really important to, uh, to working and also with color, being able to use color, uh, with a lot of freedom and not feeling like you're, you know, not being scared to use certain colors. Um, you know, with the nature of like painting, in my opinion, is that, you know, you can always paint over something. It's just paint. So say you put down brown. I mean, I hate brown, but <laughs> you put brown down, you can always paint over it. And, and so it's, um, and I mean, this a little oversaturated here, but the, there are, it looks like there, maybe I did use some kind of orangish brown color. Uh, another thing that's kind of funny, I don't know, like, I'm always really concerned about like certain colors together making like, like for example in Detroit just now I'm talking with my assistant and he's like, well we should put red right there. And we had this big green thing going on, like big green shape and I'm like, that's gonna look like Christmas. It's gonna, you, you put green and red together, it generally will look, you know, yeah, so I, it's, one, it's something that I, I'm always thinking about, you know, it's like, I don't want stuff to look Halloween. I don't want it to look Christmas. Orange and black, you have to be very careful. Red and green, you have to be very careful. I think if it's a certain kind of green and a certain type of red, you can get away with it. But uh, I don't know, it's just, those are, the, those are the kind of conversations that that go on while working on these projects, which is, uh, I guess, I think it's kind of interesting, kind of funny. This was in Richmond, Virginia. This was a, uh, an, a, an old uh, bus depot. Um, this was one of several projects that took place um, uh, during this event. They had a, uh, a festival surrounding uh, the painting of these buildings. Um, I selected this one just because the, I thought the architecture was interesting. Uh, it's, it's a historic structure, so you know I thought that was uh, something that that would would look uh, um, you know somewhat dynamic with with um, you know a lot of bright, vibrant color. Um, and mark making on it. <clears throat> a lot of a lot of the times, I'm, I'm considering the context and how this would be viewed, and and also the architecture itself, uh, whether it be historic, you know, uh, or contemporary. Uh, this is just some action shots of the project. Uh, generally, with a lot of these, the first layer is done with a paint sprayer, just because you've got to get a lot of paint directly on a surface very quickly. Um, you know. People still, I think, assume that because it's on a wall and it's outdoors that it's got to be spray paint. Now, I, when you're working on a large scale like this, you know, spray paint is, 
it's almost impossible to, to really, uh, this is actually a lot of spray paint here, but um, I, it, it just is, it's, it's when you're working with really, really big scale, um, you start using spray and it, it, it really, you've got to have a lot of it in order to really make it, uh, to make it effective. Uh, this, this was a smaller work um, here in Atlanta on the belt line, or actually underneath the belt line, uh, I believe from 2010. Um, mostly exterior latex paint, but there is a little bit, I think the black is predominantly spray paint. Uh, kind of a limited color palette in this one. This is sort of, this is an older work, so I was, I think, still a little bit afraid to, to you know, just release and, and, and use the, basically any color that I wanted to. I was still kind of feeling like, well, you know, certain colors may not be accepted or certain, you know, pink, I can't use pink, I'm a guy, you know? But not, I, I love pink. It's, it's probably my favorite color right now. Um, this is also on the belt line here in Atlanta, an older work as well. Um, somewhat limited color palette, not, not hugely limited, but um, this was also here in Atlanta for, uh, uh, this was Faye Gold Gallery uh, over in Midtown, very close to here. Um, this, was, oh, this was done, I believe, 2012, or 2013, I think. Um, I think it was early 2013, or maybe it, I think I started in 2012 and then wrapped 2013. Um, a lot of bright color, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of layering, a lot of mark making. Um, that's something that I'm, that I'm trying to incorporate with the large scale works is uh, treating it like I do my paintings, which is reacting to the marks, creating marks and, and, and shapes and forms, and then stepping back and then painting over certain things, um, you know, washing over certain things. Trying to, trying to do that on a, on a massive scale um, is, uh, is, is, is fun, but also challenging. This is in the High Museum here in Atlanta. Uh, this was a site-specific installation that was commissioned by the, by the museum uh, as part of the uh, group exhibit that took place, uh, drawing inside the perimeter, which was uh, not this past summer, but the summer before. Um, you know, but this this piece, I think, because I had a very a very short period of time to work on. I only had a few days, and it was uh, interior. Uh, I, I definitely used um, some of the same materials that I would use outdoors on, on public projects, but uh, the, you know, I, I had to work very quickly, and I think the work kind of, the final product speaks to speed and pace. Um, there was a lot of paint that got on the floor, and I, I, that was probably the funniest, I think, part about working on this project is, it's just, you know, taking every, every precaution to like, okay, let's not get paint on the floor, let's put tape down, mask everything off, you know, and um, was not allowed to use spray paint, um, because it was inside the museum, and I think I, I, I did a little bit. <laughs> and, and I, I, I don't know how I got away with it, but I, I think I would use it and then be told not to use it, and then I used a little more and then stop. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the floor got paint on it, and I, I kept apologizing, and the guy, the, he was just like, man, it's, it's a controlled mess, it's okay, don't worry about it. And, um, yeah, so... I. Uh, we actually had a big problem just recently in Detroit, um, just an action shot of getting paint everywhere. And it, it was a little frustrating for me because we're up, you know, I'm, I'm already not enjoying the height, uh, not enjoying being up on a lift 100 feet up. And we're up there and there's people underneath us, you know, walking, you know, um, looking up and seeing what we're doing and we're using paint sprayers at that height. so there was a lot of paint flying everywhere and wind and we can't control it and I kept getting text messages like, so-and-so just walked in, executive, da 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 and got paint on. I'm like, I, 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 we're doing the best we can to not get paint everywhere, but it's sort of inevitable. It's, this is a huge project. Um, there was cars, you know, that were coming by. Oh, yeah, he's got paint on my car. <laughs> I, look, I don't know. I can't. <laughs> It's, <laughs> so there's all these logistical things with, with this stuff, but I, I find it somewhat amusing just because, you know, I, I, my studio floor is covered with paint. Um, this is actually in Detroit, recent project, last project. Um, and it's, yeah, it's sort of inevitable when you're working on, on something 
I, I guess, that is, is this large. Um, but I, uh, that's the final shot of it. Um, and over here to the right, you can see how close the sidewalk was. Some woman came by and was like, had literally a, a speck, like seriously, a, probably pink or something on her shirt. And she's like, I got, I don't know what to do. I got like pain on my shirt. And how do I go to work like this? And I was just like, I don't know. I, I you know, it's not like my assistant did it. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, and I think he did because he went up to the top at one moment and like that's when everybody got pain on him. And, uh, and, but then I saw this woman like a couple minutes later, she's like walking down the sidewalk, like still like, I'm like, if you get, if you got mad, you got pain on you, why would you walk down the same side? Well, go on the other side of the street, you know? I don't know. This is a lot of funny things that, that happened on this specific project, but um, overall, very good experience, very happy with the, with the final outcome. Um, there were, I think, a lot of, like I said, just logistical things, um, you know, again, being, you know, making sure that you're harnessed in correctly and going through all the appropriate, you know, safety precautions. Um, you know, you, you get up, you get up 100 feet in a, in a boom lift and, any kind of, any wind, any, you know, um, any shift in the system, the hydraulic system freaks me out um, just because it's, you know, you, you, you look down and you're like, wow, we're, we're pretty high. Um, behind this is actually, I don't think I have a photo of it. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wyland. He's, he's like a pretty big muralist. He's been doing it since the 70s and he paints nothing but whales and it's all done in airbrush, and uh, a lot of people either love him or hate him. I actually kind of like what he, I mean, I don't like the subject matter necessarily and the way it's painted, but he's, you know, I, I respect what he's done. He's, you know, he's, he's got these things all on aquariums all over the world, but right behind this is a giant Wyland, and it's so, it's funny because you're like looking at, at our work, and then like you look up, and it's like, whales, these huge whales right behind it. So, and people kept walking by and being like, so I, I see the whales, like, is this, wh this is, is that a whale? Like, <laughs> like, no. No, it's not a whale. It could be, if you want it to be a whale, it's a whale. I guess it could be a whale, you know? But it, it just, yeah, over and over again, we would get that. You get, you're obviously inspired by these giant whales back here. Like, <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Um, I think that may be my last slide. I believe it is. Uh, oh, little, just some works on paper. These are screen prints, um, all original monoprints, which means they're not additioned. They're just uh, unique screen prints on paper. Um, the color is, doesn't really translate here on the screen, but these are just, just kind of a, a through these in just to have an example of you know, several works that, that uh, you know, reflect color and emphasis being placed on color and form. Um, and uh, I, again, you can't really, some of these colors are, are very, uh, very bright, but uh, like this one, red and yellow is pretty bright. Um, I usually mix all my, my colors. I don't, I don't, I tend not to go directly out of um, the tube or anything. And it comes very kind of instinctual. I just kind of grab things and, uh, in this case with the silk screen ink, I'm just grabbing it, mixing up colors, and, uh, and then going from there. But yeah, I don't want to take too much more time here. Um, I think that is pretty much it for my slides. And uh, yeah, love to answer any questions if there are any. Awesome. Thank you. So... Uh, Alex will call on people, and then I'll run a mic over to you, and then make sure you ask the question in the mic. I have one question I wanted to start off with. Um, you've been doing this for almost 20 years. Anything you would say specifically to the creative community in Atlanta to help us do better work? What have you learned in 20 years that you could like, quickly share with us that would inspire us to do even better work? Um, I, good question. I would say, uh, well, out of those 20 years, I spent uh, a good portion of that 20 years being not professional, you know, just being young and doing, uh, did a lot of graffiti, both legal and illegal. And um, I would say, and I went to art school for a semester, 
So I, didn't, I mean, it took me a while to figure out, all right, what, what, let's get serious and really think about what I want to do. Um, but I would, I would say that uh, don't take no for an answer. Um, you know, it would be probably depending on what your, I guess depending on what that would be. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, just to, to really, um, once you have kind of a, figured out a focus, a direct focus, um, you know, give it your best. Don't, don't take no for an answer and, and always... Uh, you know, always ask questions as far as, you know, well, why not? Why can't I do that? Why? <laughs> I don't know. That's sort of, that's kind of what, the way that I think now. Um, it took me a long time to, to sort of get in that mindset, mindset um, and, and be confident, you know, be confident in what you're doing and, uh, and know that, you know, it takes hard work and just push forward. I really respect your oppositional behavior. I'm one also. Uh, tell me what happened with the church. It looks like a great place for uh, creative people to hang out. Uh, it, it's actually owned by a, uh, a guy who, he's a real estate developer, and he, he originally, his, his original intent was to uh, renovate it and, and do something with it. Because it was, it was historic, he, he wasn't able to, he wasn't gonna tear it down, obviously. Uh, I think now they have uh, done something with the inside. When I painted it, there was nothing inside. It was completely abandoned. But I, I believe now they've got, they're doing events and art shows and things like that. So it's sort of, uh, they have like a community garden that's taking place outside. So they're, you know, they're, they're definitely giving it, uh, it, it, it exists, I guess, as a piece of art. Uh, but there's also things that are going on inside. I don't know what the long-term plan is, but for now that's what, Hi, um, I have two questions actually. Um, I know you mentioned you started out with graffiti and you know you participated a little bit in that and a lot of your works have to do with murals and stuff. So the first question is, do you identify with street art and um, how do you feel about the temporal nature of like some of your work? Because it might, like you said, the, the artist that you, um, the guy who does the whales or whatever. I <laughs> yeah. moved from Chicago, Wild. and I remember that there was a huge building in downtown Chicago with like a whale mural, and it was covered up because another building was built like right in front of it. So how do you feel about the temporal <clears throat> nature of your work? So that's the first question, and whether you identify with street art. Um, the second question is, what's the most interesting architectural, like architecturally or structurally, what's the most interesting building you've painted? Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't like the word. I don't. There's two words that I don't really like, and one of I don't like the word graffiti really, and I don't like the word street art. Um, I mean, graffiti really is. It's it exists, and it. I mean, it is. I think by its definition, graffiti, and it makes sense. But street art to me is like I, I hate that word because it's it's sort of like putting. It's like saying, oh, this guy he does that. Yeah, that's what he does. It's like. It's like, put, I guess it's sort of, at this point, such a broad, like, um, category that it, it, it sort of, uh, people have gravitated towards that word and kind of use it, and it is appropriate, but, uh, I, you know, I don't know, I, I don't view what I do as that, um, so, I mean, it, although a lot of, a lot of people would, would, would say that, uh, I just view it as public art or, or murals or um, large-scale paint, uh, you know, exterior paintings. Um, as far as, were you speaking on like work being covered? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, or maybe it was just a temporary installation and someone else covered over it or something. Yeah, I, th I think uh, most, most of my stuff is, uh, is supposed to be, I mean it has either a, a, a sort of a time period where it's going to exist or it, it's supposed to be permanent and, and obviously the elements, the weather, things like that can, can change it. The, the Wyland in, um, uh, Detroit that I was speaking about actually was covered with an ad for a long time, which was I found kind of annoying. I don't know why anybody would do that, but um, I think he made a big fuss about it and they took it down. And uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know, it, personally, I would like for for things to stay. Um, obviously, it, it just depends. You know, if, if it's a rotating ex exhibit, some other artist comes and like the Bowery Wall in Manhattan. That's that's uh, you know. Every artist that is selected to do that, it's it's sort of like it's like almost like an 
it's an outdoor exhibit, you know, you do it and then somebody else comes and does it. So that's different, different context, but uh, prefer not for things to be covered if possible, you know, other, you know, um, if it's natural, if it happens naturally, that's, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You said that you hate brown and that right now you like pink. Um, I have a lot of colors that I don't like working with, but they might um, make sense for the client that I'm working on. Like, have you ever had to, or how do you get comfortable with working with a color that you don't like if it makes sense for a project? Good question. Uh, I think, you know, like also, I didn't even mention this, but a lot of, I think it's, I, artists that I look at, like temporary artists or painters that I look at that I that I admire, work sometimes with colors that I'm like, oh my god, that's like horrible color. But they the way that they use it is so, it's almost like acknowledging the the, the bad color. So I think that in some cases, like it's it can work to your advantage, like using like I don't like hunter green really. I, I don't know, it's just not a big fan of like dark 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 green. But I think in some context it can work um, as far as like pleasing a client I don't like pleasing clients <laughs> so I don't know I mean I don't I don't I don't get work in that world you know I mean I to a, yes to a degree obviously um, I get I get annoyed easily with 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 people telling me oh well I like more of this color it's just that's not for me but um, but I would, yeah, I, you know, I think that there is definitely a way to, to make everybody happy and, 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 uh, and make yourself happy because that's, ultimately that's what's important if, if you're being creative, you know, you want to be happy with what you're doing. Let's do two more questions. Do you sketch any of your work before you go out and execute? And uh, how do you get inspired by the, the colors that you use, select colors that you use? Sometimes I'll do stuff on Photoshop just to get an idea um, or work out, like, you know, in my studio, rough drawings for large, larger scale works. Um, anything in my studio, like works on paper, paintings, never just I start usually. Um, with these, these are screen prints, so I had to draw the shapes uh, on the transparency and have that burned, and then uh, so that's somewhat predetermined. All the public art stuff, no, I, I well, I'll, I'll I'll do renderings in Photoshop to get a general idea, but it it, it never turns out the way that um, that you know from the image that I have always ends up changing um, over the course of working on it, and it's that exploration that I really like, and and the unknown, not knowing what it's going to be. A, a lot of artists that I know work kind of knowing ahead of time, okay, this is going to be, you know, and, and I think it's a more efficient way of working, especially on a large scale, but I'd, I'd throw efficiency out the door because I, I just want to, I, I want to have that, that kind of experimental phase and, and not knowing exactly what's going to happen and then dis in the discovery, you know, oh, wow, look at, look at what just happened with this mistake, you know, now we have something interesting to work with, so. I'll repeat. Um, I just said, uh, following on that last question, when you're working in the unknown and you kind of just start something, how do you know when you're finished? How do you, how do you feel that you know, I guess? That, that, uh, that's probably the hardest thing for me is not knowing when to, like not, not knowing when to stop. I, I tend to want to keep going and going and going. And at some point you have to, you have to know, all right, enough's enough. Like, you know, got, you know, 300 hours into this thing or, or you know, X amount of material cost, and it's just you get to a point where, you know, it's you don't want to overwork it, and um, and I've I think I've been guilty of in the past of just kind of going one step too far because I'll look at photos and being like, you know, oh, okay, this is, and I'll I'm like, wow, I liked it before I added that, you know, color, and and, and then there's also been you know the situation where wow, I really like what I added, I really like I took it this the next you know. Uh, we took it one more step farther, and, and, it, and it really did show. So um, that's a, I don't know how to answer that. I think just with my stuff, I, it, it, 
being that it's, it's not really intended to be anything um, specific, like a face or whatever, you know, I just, I, I get the feeling. I'm like, okay, it's done, you know. It's balanced. I like what's going on and call it a day. Let's give Hints a round of applause. <laughs>